Herzlich willkommen zu Building Smart Switzerland, Room Forum Nummer 3. Wir sind in der erste von diesem Jahr. Und äh, wir werden jetzt bis 17 Uhr euch Nachmittag haben ein langes Programm vorbereitet und euch damit auch begleiten. Ich werde kurz über das Programm etwas sagen. Wir würden kurz ein Begrüßen Einführung machen zusammen mit Allah und äh, wir würden auch heute spannende Referenten haben, international und national. Grundsätzlich, das Nachmittag ist so aufgebaut, dass die generelle Einführung haben wir drei verschiedene Room Sessions. Das ist das Building Room Session, wo auch spannende Inhalte sind und Gastreferenten sind. Dann haben wir auch Construction Room Sessions, wo genau so Updates über die Aktivitäten und Aktivitäten von Arbeitsgruppen vorhanden sind und Build Projektgruppen. Aber gleichzeitig auch wieder Gastreferat und zum Schluss haben wir das Infra Room Session, wo auch wir wieder äh, Updates und äh, Inputs Referaten haben. Und danach würden wir mit einem Closing Plenary das Nachmittag enden. Gut, vielleicht kann ich kurz für mich selber vorstellen. Mein Name ist Gianluca Genova. Ich bin der Vorstandsmitglied äh, von Baudigital Schweiz Building 2017 Land und gleichzeitig darf das Building Room bei Building Schweiz Leiter und gleichzeitig bin ich bei Building Smart International ein Building Room Steering Committee Member. Mhm. Und damit gebe ich auch das Wort an Allah weiter und gerne kann er sich vorstellen. Genau, ganz herzlichen Dank, oder? Ihr merkt, ihr merkt, es ist ein bisschen Interaktion hier, oder? Wir freuen uns, dass wir heute aus dem Messeturm hier in Basel senden dürfen. Ähm, noch viel mehr würde es uns natürlich freuen, wenn wir mal wieder zusammen wären und sind aber, aber zuversichtlich, dass jetzt mit der zunehmenden Entwicklung auch in positiver Hinsicht oder dass wir später im Jahr, vielleicht im Herbst mal wieder eine richtig, richtige Runde zusammen äh, angehen können und uns wieder mal physisch äh, direkt und hoffentlich vielleicht auch auf ein Bier dazu ähm, gemeinsam treffen können. Ähm, Nichtsdestotrotz nutzen wir zusammen mit dem Swissbau Innovation Lab, das heute Morgen gelaufen ist, hier die Räumlichkeiten des, der Swissbau hier in Basel und freuen uns, dass wir hier als Moderatorenteam oder mit den Roomleadern hier zusammen vor Ort sein können und auch so ein bisschen den Spirit der gemeinsamen Zusammenarbeit oder des gemeinsamen Vorantragen des Themas hier trotzdem transportieren können. Insgesamt haben wir wieder einen wirklich herausragenden Line-up über den Tag. Und um das ein bisschen einzuordnen oder warum wir, wo wir da stehen in den Themen oder was im Markt jetzt auch in der Schweiz läuft, ein bisschen übergeordnet nochmal eine Sicht reinzugeben, haben wir euch nochmal mitgebracht, quasi vorweg, bevor wir dann mit dem Thomas nochmal ins Use Case Management und zum Frederic Grand überleiten, unseren Keynote und Special Guest heute von, von Building Smart International. Nochmal so ein bisschen so der Reason Why, wo sind wir eigentlich gerade, was, an was, wo steht der Markt, wo steht die Entwicklung und wo wollen wir eigentlich hin? Viele von euch ist, kennen vielleicht den Stufenplan, ich habe es hier nochmal eingeblendet, oder den wir vor zwei, drei Jahren hier mit natürlich viel Anlehnung an andere Stufenpläne in anderen Märkten herausgegeben haben. Und äh, wir können auch mit Sicherheit sagen, oder die Reife gerade der Stufen haben sich äh, ganz klar so erhärtet, oder dass es, ähm, das kann man so festhalten, oder aber dieser Weg dorthin, oder was gilt es jetzt eigentlich zu tun? Wie kommen wir jetzt aus dem, aus den Themen, äh, die wir im Moment treiben, auch wirklich in eine digitale Durchgängigkeit, in, in eine digital-physische Vernetzung? Ähm, was ist eigentlich der Weg dorthin und, und wie geht es weiter? Das heißt auf der einen Seite die Message, wir werden ähm, zusammen mit äh, Partnern und freuen uns da schon sehr drauf, auch in eine Überarbeitung starten äh, mit dem Stufenplan und, äh, und das äh, nochmal auch in, mehr in ein Instrument weiterentwickeln. Wie können wir jetzt die Verständigung im Markt oder wie können wir diesen gemeinsamen Weg auch äh, beschreiben und uns dort äh, äh, mit gegenseitig unterstützen? Ähm, Im Kontext quasi entstand oder mit äh, Bauen Digital, äh, Building Smart äh, Schweiz zusammen und dem Digitalisierungsindex, äh, der von POM äh, getrieben wird, entstand eine Umfrage jetzt im im Herbst, Frühjahr und ähm, wir haben dort im Wesentlichen so ein bisschen in der Einordnung eben gefragt, oder wo steht jetzt der Markt aus Sicht des Stufenplans oder wo steht ihr im Tagesgeschäft, wo steht ihr in den Pilotprojekten, wo steht ihr in den Strategiezielen und wenn man das eben dann mappt oder auf den Stufenplan, dann sieht man ganz gut, dass so im Kern oder die Fragestellungen der Modellierung, die Fragestellung der modellbasierten Zusammenarbeit, das sind hier diese grauen, äh, grauen Dots oder im Stufe 2, oder? Das ist, ähm, das ist so im Moment das, was in den 
äh, so mehr Verbreitung findet oder aber in der Regel ähm, verstanden ist, angewendet werden kann, die Technologie vorhanden ist, oder? Ähm, aber die, äh, die Stufe 3 oder Richtung Automatisierung, Vernetzung, oder? Das ist da äh, kaum in den Pilotprojekten drin oder da fehlt es noch wirklich an, äh, an, 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 an Verständnis, an Möglichkeiten. Und dann haben wir uns eben gefragt, na, warum ist das denn eigentlich so? Oder wo liegen denn eigentlich die Herausforderungen? Und haben das dann korreliert, oder? Zwischen was, ähm, was ist, äh, wo ist der größte Verbesserungsbedarf und wo sind die größten Herausforderungen? Und es ist eigentlich klar, das Cluster, oder? Zwischen der Kultur, der Integration in die Wertschöpfungskette, das Wissen, oder? Dort ist das größte Gap ähm, in dem, in, der, in dem Verständnis, in den Fähigkeiten, in den Möglichkeiten. Aber was, was, uns, was für uns vor allen Dingen besonders spannend war, ist, wer ist denn jetzt eigentlich, wen sehen wir denn, wen sieht der Markt in der, in der Verantwortung, im Lied und welche Themen müssen denn bewegt werden? Also das ganz links oder das Erreichen der BIM-Stufe 3, was brauchen wir, oder? Wir brauchen durchgängige Standards oder das, die höchste Anteil, 46 Prozent. Wir brauchen offene Technologien, ähm, auch mit 40 Prozent ganz vorne dran. Aber wer soll das denn jetzt lösen, oder? Und natürlich sind die Standardisierungsinstitutionen, die nationalen Institutionen sind dort relevant, aber für uns auch wirklich eigentlich so die Rückbestätigung oder der größte Anteil im Lied für die Verbesserung sind die Marktteilnehmer. Und ich glaube, das ist eigentlich so der Punkt, warum sind wir auch hier oder wir sind die Marktteilnehmer, wir sind die Community und, und das sind eben auch viele Fragestellungen, die lassen sich nicht über Top-Down lösen, die lassen sich nicht über einzelne Positionen rauslösen, sondern die lassen sich wirklich nur gemeinsam Aussicht äh, der, der, des Marktes ähm, der, der Beteiligten dort vorantreiben. Insofern ähm, äh, glauben wir, sind wir hier am richtigen Ort und über eure Beiträge äh, auf den richtigen Themen unterwegs. Ähm, und nochmal das so ein bisschen quergelegt, oder was bedeutet das jetzt auch oder was könnt ihr davon auch mitnehmen oder was äh, what's in for you an der Stelle, wenn man diese Double S Curve, wenn man sich so ein bisschen in Erinnerung ruft oder viele kennen das ja so von den Beispielen von Nokia oder von Kodak oder dass so die Fotograf die Fotografie hat es irgendwie nicht geschafft oder in die Digitalfotografie äh, zu wechseln, die die Mobiltelefone nicht in die Smartphones und so weiter, oder? Und ich glaube, wenn man das jetzt mal ein bisschen äh, überspitzt oder so ein bisschen pointiert ähm, formuliert, dann ist, sind wir eigentlich genau in diesem Kontext unterwegs, oder? Der Stufenplan, die Stufen 1, 2, die Modellierung, die jetzt im Moment im Markt immer mehr greifen, oder? Damit kann man noch auf den bestehenden Prozessen arbeiten. Äh, da kann man sequenziell arbeiten, das funktioniert alles, oder? Und man kann die Modelle nutzen. Aber wenn ich wirklich in eine digitale Integration, in eine digitale Durchgängigkeit gehen will, oder dann muss ich dort auf einem höheren Grad von Innovation unterwegs sein. Und diese Discontinuity oder, oder was, wie kann man es eben lösen? Oder das ist eben nicht nur die Technologie, die's, die notwendig ist, sondern es ist eben auch ähm, die, äh, die Frage der, was ist eigentlich die Veränderung in der Organisation? Und da sehe ich eben uns oder wir hier als die Rooms-Teilnehmer oder wir sind eigentlich genau dieser Kern dieser Innovation at organizational level, die um uns rum die Themen bewegen, die dann wieder es ermöglichen, auch in die nächste in die nächste Kurve reinzugehen. Und an der Stelle würde ich eigentlich gerne an den Thomas weitergeben, der uns ähm, hier jetzt äh, den, auch den Link macht äh, zum Use Case Management, nochmal zum Building Smart Data Dictionary und freue mich auf einen super spannenden Tag zusammen, auf einen intensiven Austausch, auf viel Feedback von euch auch. Und genau, ganz herzlichen Dank fürs dabei sein. Thomas, lieben Dank. Ja, hallo, guten Tag von meiner Seite auch. Mein Name ist Thomas Glattli. Ich bin Co-Geschäftsführer von Bau und Digital Schweiz für diejenigen, die mich noch nicht kennen. Ich möchte euch ganz kurz den Status des Use Case Managements erzählen und dazu werde ich auf Englisch switchen, weil im Anschluss ans Use Case Management wird dann Frédéric Grand äh, uns den BSDD vorstellen und äh, er spricht Französisch und Englisch, äh, damit er auch hier meine Einführung mitkriegt. Äh, so, I'd like to switch to English. Frédéric, uh, welcome uh, also from my side. Uh, I'm very pleased that you could uh, join us here and uh, present us uh, the uh, Building Small Data Dictionary uh, later on. So I'd like to start with a short introduction about the Use Case Management Service. 
Uh, so for those who have joined the last uh, Building Smart Virtual Summit uh, in March this year, they maybe have noticed that uh, we launched the official room and chapter engagement now. So all rooms and uh, chapters from Building Smart are now really supported also by the Building Smart Management Office to really implement uh, their use cases and their um, um, information delivery manuals into the platform. So we had already quite a number of um, starting meetings. Uh, today was, for example, a uh, construction room uh, steering committee uh, where we could pre present the use case management and uh, ensure that uh, also the project will uh, use the use case management tool. So for those who don't know the use case management, so it's an official um, uh, service from Building Smart International. Uh, we have a website where we uh, publish the results and then so-called co-creation space where um, the teams can jointly develop their use cases and their uh, IDMs. Um, why do we do that? Uh, because uh, I think we can really accelerate uh, the, the speed uh, for implementation, implementation of these BIM applications. And uh, furthermore, and uh, very important, is the cooperation and communication between us. Uh, I already mentioned quite often, uh, Today, we have a lot of chapters, um, organizations, rooms, they do great work, but uh, it's not visible uh, for, for the others. And the use case management takes the work of them together, so um, publish all the results, so everybody knows what happens in the market, at least in the community of Building Smart uh, International. And we also opened the um, use case management service also to companies, associations, and institutions, so everybody can basically work into the use case management. Um, where do we go uh, with the uh, use case management? So we uh, are working on a, on a small vision where we uh, like to uh, be in a few uh, months or years. Uh, so um, first of all, I think the information management is the key yeah. issue in our, our BIM project. So we need really a consistent information management over the whole life cycle of an asset. And then digitalization is, is kind of a standardization. So uh, if you like to share your data, your information, they must be as standardized as possible. Today, uh, we are most mostly in practice projects, so all companies uh, or companies working in their projects. But uh, for the next project, maybe they have to start again because it's not really shared with others. So we have to come into the best practice. Uh, this is the work we do here uh, at uh, Building Smart Switzerland uh, and uh, Building Smart International as well. Uh, create this best practice, bring people together. And uh, you see here a new uh, sentence, common practice. Uh, if we uh, continue to de develop and uh, make projects, then uh, we get uh, better and better. So we have kind of a common practice. It's not yet the standard, but the standard then will follow. So if we have a un uh, same understanding, a common understanding about the practice, then we can uh, come up in a standard. On the other way, we have the Building Smart uh, Standard and Solution Program. Of course, we always follow this program uh, with the necessary steps to develop a standard. Today, as you see here, we have the use case management as it is with the, the three core elements. So you have the description of the use case or the definition of the use case in a text format uh, where you say, OK, this is what I want. This is what I need. These are my references. These are, are um, the basics I have. And then uh, the core work of the um, use case management is to develop the process. So with all the actors and the phases and uh, the information you have to share to a certain point of time. And out of that, you can create uh, machine read uh, a human readable uh, exchange requirement so it's in a non-technical format uh, understandable for everybody so our next and very important step is how do we create machine readable exchange requirements and this here is the link to to frederick's presentation um, the building smart data dictionary is really the, the base the single source of truths where we really have to create our exchange requirements and uh, we have now to, to uh, discuss and find out how we're going to do that and who are the partners, uh, software companies, uh, industry partners, and so on. It's not only the work of, uh, of Building Smart, but uh, here we need the whole community together. 
Another important step is, is the quality gate. So we are, a use case can only be really used if we have a model, uh, if we made, made a proof of concept, and we have uh, also, we should have a model checker inside. So that this uh, finalized basically the, the use case itself. So with the model, with the exchange requirements, with the model checker, then we know, okay, there is a high quality of the, the use case we can use. If we develop that here in Switzerland, then we maybe uh, decide at a certain point of time that uh, we should apply uh, for an activity proposal and uh, make, a, um, make a Building Smart International project out of it, or we continue, um, gain more experience, uh, more and more, uh, we'll further develop uh, the, the use case and uh, increase in the maturity grade of the use case. But last but not least, uh, by the end, uh, final standard should be uh, our uh, target. So either in as an IFC standard in an IFC release or as a national uh, standard if, if uh, there is only a national importance for it. So basically, this is uh, where we uh, continue to develop the, the use case management. So there is a lot of work uh, to do for us, but uh, however, it will be very, very interesting. So now uh, I would like to hand over to Frederic Grand. He is uh, the technical director of Building Smart France, and he is uh, uh, responsible for the Building Smart uh, Data Dictionary. So uh, please welcome um, Frederic Grand. So we're going to share our screen. Thank you. Uh, I will try to share my screen. Please just tell me if you can see it. Yes, perfect. yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, so first, thank you to give me the opportunity uh, to make this presentation today. Uh, that I'm really happy to be there with you. And uh, yes, I've been asked to to present you um, what is BSD, what is it is meant for, and uh, well, in fact, BSD that's a really simple thing. Um, let's say we are in a in a BIM world with BIM projects and we are using IFC and everything is uh, perfect in a perfect world. Uh, but when we, when we are using IFC, uh, we will still need to be able to uh, use classification systems. And we will have classification systems uh, coming from specific country. Let's say I'm working uh, in Netherlands, I will use an LSFB. Uh, I'm working uh, in Great Britain, I will use Uniclass, and I maybe use CoClass, Omniclass. Um, so I will need to be able to, uh, to add classification codes to uh, my IFC model. Um, if I am a structural engineer, I will have to make some calculations. If I am in Europe, I will have to use Eurocodes. So I need also to be able to add semantics and properties um, to make those calculations in my BIM model. And uh, well, here comes the Building Smart Data Dictionary. All those properties or attributes or whatever is the name you want to use for them, uh, they will not provide. They will not be provided by uh, the IFC itself. But the IFC will provide you a way um, to link. Uh, the properties you use to some definitions in a dictionary. And that's where stands uh, the Building Smart D Dictionary. Um, that's a service operated by Building Smart International, uh, which main purpose is to host and publish classification systems, of course, IFCs, uh, national dictionaries, uh, national, European, international standards, and, and to do it in a standardized way and in a structured way. So you can access all those information and all those definitions uh, from any software uh, which is BIM compliant. So really simple. Uh, in fact, the Building Smart Data Dictionary is a database providing a service uh, to store, uh, publish this content and to access it. But it, it's a little bit more than that. Uh, and I like to call it a kind of federation service uh, because the BSDD will handle um, many, many different what we call domains, which can be classifications, dictionaries, standards, and so on, as I said, um, we have the ability to make connection uh, between those standards. 
it, it means that we will be able to connect uh, some IFC entities uh, to some classification codes in another classification and uh, to add the right properties to it, for example. Uh, it will be able to connect also uh, to external dictionaries. Um, let's say in Switzerland, you have a dictionary provided, I don't know, by CRB. Uh, if they follow the same standards, then that, that will not be an issue for BSD to be connected both ways uh, to those dictionaries to share the same definitions about uh, construction objects, data templates and properties. Um, and really something really important also is that any content provider, uh, so any company, uh, structure, association who is providing his content in inside BSDD remains the owner of its domain and is the only one who is allowed to make changes and uh, to uh, to manage the, this content. Uh, Building Smart International will never take the ownership of it and uh, will never make any change on this content. That will be only the domain owner uh, who is able to do that. Uh, so yeah, I will skip this one. Uh, that's really to explain you. You can see a domain again as a classification. So let's say here I have Uniclass, here I have Omniclass, here I have IFC, Coclass, uh, and we have all those definitions, all this content uh, structured in a standardized way inside BSD and all those domains are connected. And of course, if uh, again, we have this uh, kind of CRB dictionary or whatever outside BSDs and we will be able to have also those, those connections in the database. Um, so again, really quickly, uh, let's that's that's something we already have in the database. We of course we have all the IFC uh, schema properties available in BSD. And for example, uh, well that that's a structure uh, example, but it doesn't matter. In IFC, I have something called IFC bridge part uh, dot superstructure. And uh, also in the BSD, a French project, which is called MIND, has been working on a specific dictionary of specific properties, uh, national and international properties needed to describe uh, bridge components. And they also have something called bridge superstructure. Well, inside BSDD, they will be able to make the link between this, uh, this dictionary, this bridge dictionary, and this IFC class. So when you are accessing an IFC model, you will know that this IFC entities is the same thing as a uh, bridge superstructure in a dictionary with specific properties. And as I told you, we are going uh, a little bit further. Um, well, something that is problematic, let's say today, is I'm receiving a, an IFC model, and in a, this IFC model, I've got an IFC wall, easy, and this IFC wall has a property set attached to it, which is called pset wall common. And in this pset wall common, I have two properties which are load bearing, which is a Boolean value, which can be true or false. And the second one is, is external, which is again a Boolean value, uh, which can be true or false. So that's the thing I have in my, uh, in my B model, uh, fine. And then I want to automatically apply a classification code coming in this example from NLSFB classification, uh, which is a Dutch classification. And in this classification, I've got a code 22.21, uh, which is a code for load bearing interior walls. And today, it's just impossible uh, automatically to say that this IFC wall is the same as this 22.21 load bearing interior wall, because that's not true. That's not the same. But what, what we can say is in the SDD to say, OK, in this classification code, I am connected to those IFC properties, which are load bearing and is external, plus with a specific value true for load bearing and false for with uh, is external. So BSDD will allow me to finally make this link between 22.21 and IFC wall plus load bearing true plus is external false. Well, that means that BSDD will allow you to receive a BIM model, connect to BSDD and automatically assign classification codes uh, regarding IFC entities plus properties of the value attached to these entities. That's the first thing. And you can also see it the other way around. I'm receiving an IFC model uh, when on IFC wall, I have tagged this classification code. By connecting to BSDD, I will check that I have the right values in the corresponding properties. 
So we can see it both ways. And that's that's a really uh, current use case today we have uh, with uh, with uh, BSD is a kind of automatically attach classification codes or the other way around, uh, be able to check a model uh, by using BSD and all the definition and semantics that we have inside it. Uh, really quickly, I will show you, uh, that's not on the right screen, um, a, a short video. Um, I, I, I will go, go fast on it. Um, that, that's a SketchUp plugin, uh, just for, for you to understand exactly what I explained you right now. I will put it yeah, in full screen. So uh, I am in SketchUp. Uh, I have this specific uh, BSD plugin, which has been developed by DigiBase. I have a BIM model, which is an IFC model, and uh, I will select uh, really easy uh, an external wall. When I'm selecting this external wall, uh, my uh, SketchUp plugin will connect to BSD by saying, OK, give me in the database all the specific uh, entities you have inside BSD, which are related to IFC wall. And so BSD will reply, OK, I have information about IFC wall, of course, in IFC, but also in the ATIM content. Uh, I don't know if you if you know ATIM, but uh, that's that's a classification uh, mostly for wall seller for distribution. Uh, I have information in PDTs, uh, in a PDT domain, and I have information in this uh, Dutch classification system, which is NLSFB. So I will say to BSD, OK, give me all the NLSFB classification codes or classification items uh, that are related to IFC wall. And uh, I will receive the list of NLSFB um, entities connected to IFC wall. And by selecting one, that's exactly what I shown you before, I will know that this classification code um, is corresponding to an IFC wall with the properties IFC is external true and load bearing true in this case. Uh, what I will be able automatically to do by selecting this is to bring back the information in my FC model. Now I know that I have chosen this classification code. It is attached to my BIM model uh, by using the IFC classification reference. Uh, that's more for technical guys, but IFC will, will handle this information and this link um, to this IFC class to, to this NLSFB classification code. Sorry, and it will check or bring back the information about the IFC PSET wall common. So I will be able to, uh, well, that's an example for classification, but it can be exactly the same to bring back information, again, to make specific calculations, uh, to have specific requirements on, on, a, on a BIM model, and to bring back uh, those specifications, those requirements inside the IFC model. And this is directly handled uh, by the, uh, the IFC file. Um, I'm trying to be fast. Uh, let me go, yeah. So uh, uh, as a quick summary, uh, what is important to understand about the BSDD is that that's a service uh, for publication and distribution of standards. We can host many, many, many standards uh, in the database. We are able to connect uh, to other, uh, other dictionary. Uh, all the ownership of the content will remain uh, to the content provider, meaning me for example, uh, the use case management tool uh, may have specific uh, content, specific properties they want to use to create uh, requirements. Uh, if you put them inside BSD, you will keep the control of them and the ownership of them. And that's really, really important for me. Uh, we can extend and reuse standards. And it's really important to be able to improve um, definitions that we have in IFC to add uh, the right properties that we need in our own countries. Uh, again, for example, for thermal calculations, uh, you will have uh, specific uh, specific regulations to address with specific properties. You can bring back them to, from BSD. And on my side in France, I have other properties that I need to use. And again, I will enrich my IFC file with those. And this can be uh, checked using the use case management tool in my mind. Um, and really important, BSD will never handle uh, the data of a project. That's not our use case. We will not store the data corresponding to a project. We will never host a manufacturer product data. Um, that's just made for maintaining uh, the standards, providing the definition, and it's not meant to be a, a standard on, on its own. Um, where are we today? Um, we still call it a prototype. Uh, Still, it will be released officially, let's say, uh, before this summer. Um, that's running on Microsoft Azure. Um, 
that's already been deployed and uh, I will give you some links if you want to uh, to play with it, to have access to the already available content. Uh, right now we already have, well, it's written 15 domains deployed or in prototype. In fact, if we just can't count the prototype, we are around 20 domains, including IFC, uh, ATIM, Uniclass, CCI, uh, Bridge Content, uh, etc. So uh, already quite uh, quite a lot of uh, interesting content, let's say. And then how can you access it? Well, I told you BSDD, that's, that's a database, uh, but we have a service on top of it. So uh, you will have access to it. Of, of course, you can use the website to search and look at the definition, but that's not the main use case. What we provide is a, G, a REST JSON API or GraphQL API. Uh, that's more for technical people, but the idea is to help uh, software vendors to be able to connect their tools to the BSDD. And that's where it takes all its power. Uh, it's having specific plugins in specific uh, software tools uh, to be able to enrich IFC model, to check IFC model uh, by using all those interconnected definitions. And uh, what we what we have today as connected softwares, in, in fact, we had a, an hackathon in March uh, with software vendors and the goal was to say, okay, your software vendors, we have this BSD thing, uh, please show us that you can improve your software by connecting to the right definitions and use them in your BIM softwares. And uh, that was a great surprise. But at the end of this today hackathon, uh, we saw 10 demos from software vendors uh, available and uh, providing access to um, to BSD. So I sh I shown you the SketchUp plugin, uh, but we also had a demo of BIMdata.io, which is a collaborative platform, and they already have a plugin. So in the BIM platform, you can uh, upload an IFC, then connect to BSDD and attach classification code, as I shown you, uh, but also bring back some specific properties, some specific definitions uh, you want to handle um, in, in, your, in your BIM model. So let's say I have a, I have a BIM execution plan with specific requirements. Uh, they have been managing the uh, use case management tool, uh, saying that on IFC wall in Switzerland, I need to have a, a, a U-value, um, uh, an acoustic uh, property corresponding to these UN standards. Uh, you can just take them back from BSD and attach those properties into the IFC file. Uh, that's, that's the idea. We also had uh, the demo of a, a connector from Ninex, uh, which is inside Revit. So in your Revit model, you are able to bring back uh, information to an IFC file. Uh, we also uh, saw a demo from Aka Softwares um, in their uh, BIM, uh, in BIM design tools and also in their BIM platform connected to BSDD. And we also saw a really impressive demo of Autodesk uh, who made a connection to BSDD, not in Revit, but in Autodesk Forge. And uh, that's really interesting because by doing that, they are able to push properties, attributes, and information coming from BSDD inside all their softwares, meaning not only Revit, but also BIM 360 uh, and some um, infrastructure software they have. So um, today they are working on a direct connection in Forge uh, to this BSDD to be able to, uh, to provide and, uh, well, enrich uh, the IFC content. We also saw a demo of a, of a tool where you say, okay, I want to check an IFC file and for those entities, I will check that this property, this property and these properties are available in my model. So let's say I have the UCM, I have defined the properties and the information I need. And on the other side, this checker will connect to BSDD to see the list of uh, entities and properties I want to have in my file and will check the IFC uh, to be sure it is compliant with my specific requirements. And, uh, and I have tried to, uh, to stick in my 15 minutes. So I really hope uh, it hasn't been too fast and uh, you found the information interesting for you. Um, some, some links that may be useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions, you want to try the API, you want to push some content inside BSDD and to try to interact with it, please feel free to contact the support, bsdd underscore support at buildingsmart.org. Uh, we are three people receiving those emails and we will take care of you, of course. Uh, if you want to see this video, uh, 
with more time that I've done, you've got the link in here. If you want to try the REST API and you are you are a software vendor or whatever, this is the link to access it. And if you want to have a look just at the content that we already have inside BSD, uh, this is the link where you can access it and see what is already available on the database. And uh, well, for technical people, we have also a, a GitHub, which is GitHub slash building smart slash BSD, where you will find more videos uh, about the plugins I've shown you and uh, more demos uh, on how to access and use uh, um, the BSD content. And, uh, and again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to have this discussion around BSD. I really hope this helps and that's kind of information you were waiting for. And uh, yeah, I don't know if we have time for questions, but don't hesitate to send me emails if you want to discuss furthermore on the topic. Thanks a lot. Frederick, so thank you so much for taking your time and bringing those valuable insights to us or uh, to the community and to show where in the process of really getting um, technologies ac uh, accessible or that help us in the in the way for for digital continuity to to get a step further and particularly for us or from the team that is working uh, heavily on the use case management development or it's um, <clears throat> it's really great to see that this connectivity is starting to happen as well and it's a good inspiration for us as well with the hackathon or to get as well the software vendors more engaged or which which we will look into um, from the use case management as well uh. and um, but we have as well questions from here from the audience and um, Thomas will uh, will uh, will moderate and bring in some views that we have prepared as well. Frederick, if you could stay for us with us for a few more moments, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have uh, two questions out of the audience. Uh, maybe uh, I read this uh, questions. So, uh, what is the process in uh, building smart data dictionary to define the terms for the classification system in different languages? What happens with the uh, nations that use the same languages but use for the same thing slightly different terms? Who defines it? So okay. uh, the French, German, uh, the, the, the uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss, French, sorry, and the, the French, French. This, this is uh, maybe yeah. the question. That, that's, uh, that's, that's always a nice topic, the difference with, between French, French and Swiss, French. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, as I told you, uh, Building Smart International is just hosting the content. So it's the content provider which will provide all the translations. Uh, meaning if I'm uh, a team, for example, they have already done it. Uh, I have some content in English and uh, in French and in German. I am the one who is providing all the translations. And uh, BSDD is just providing um, what is in the database. So Building Smart will not will never uh, do anything on the contents. That's up to each content provider to define exactly uh, the translations. And also, if he wants to, to make links to IFC, uh, he has to do it. And he is the one who is deciding uh, if this connection is right or not, and uh, if he has to make it. So we will, we will not handle that at all. Uh, that's on the content provider plate to, to manage it. But of course, we will have all those translations available after that. You can choose, I'm downloading the information uh, in German, in uh, French French, in French Swiss, uh, without any issue. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question for me, from my side, is, is regarding quality management. Is there any, min any minimal requirements uh, for the content provider? So if I have a classification system, I start a little bit, Put some content in the in the uh, BSDD and then I stop in the middle. So so how do you ensure that the, the content of a classification system, for example, is is completely uh, uh, available in the BSDD? Uh, yeah, uh, about uh, quality control. Uh, in fact, we have two things. The first one is BSDD is made on top of ISO standards, uh, which are ISO 2336, 2337, and ISO 12.06-3. Um, so by doing that, uh, we are requiring uh, some kind of information. So, for example, for a property, you have to give a name, a data type, a dimension, uh, maybe boundaries, values, uh, maybe possible values. So that's, that's about its structure. And when you push content inside BSDD, we will check that this structure is well formed and it's valid. So that's the first one. And that's the only one that we address. 
That means that if uh, I am again a team and I'm pushing only half my classification, BSD will not check it. That's that's on my plate uh, to validate uh, to validate this. Well, of course, we will have discussions together and uh, check if it's okay or not. But at the end, the only responsible of what has been inserted is the content provider, and uh, that that that's really important. Yes, to uh, to understand and to know. What you will have inside BSDD, you, you, you will have a place where it's written, uh, this is my content, this is a license under which I am providing this content, it can be OpenGL, MIT or whatever, and this is the quality process insurance that I've been using. So if I left this blank, so maybe I, as a user I will not dare this content. If I'm writing down, I've been using this uh, ISO 23386 uh, workflow quality uh, procedures, then I will more there on the content, let's say. But still, uh, about the quality of it, uh, that's on the plate of the content provider. And uh, well. OK, yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I have uh, a last question uh, because we are running out of time a little bit. Uh, I think you already addressed this question in, in your last slide. So can we use the service in Switzerland and how can we get in touch? I think yeah. you. So uh, that's that's something uh, I'm missing a slide. Uh, that's that's my fault. Uh, I missed it. Uh, really important things to know is that um, access to the content is completely free. So uh, whoever wants can access to it. Uh, we have this API. You just have to register, and uh, we will give you access to it without any problem. All the content is available for free for now uh, because. Somehow we have content provider who are thinking about pushing some content which will, user will have to pay for it. But that's not the case today. Everything is completely open and free. Who is paying for it? That's the content provider. Let's say if a team wants to be inside BSDs, I have to pay a yearly fee uh, to be inside it. But to use it, no problem. Everyone can access it and use it. Just send an email to, uh, well, the, the most of uh, the API calls, uh, they even don't need to be registered. You can just uh, make an API call to see all the domains, uh, to see all the classifications in a domain. Uh, this will be completely accessible without login and uh, for free. Um, so that's the first thing. And if you need any help to use uh, the API or to understand how it works, you can send an email to me or to bsdd underscore support at buildingsmart.org and we will come back to you to help you using it. If you're a content provider, of course, you can try to, uh, you can ask for a trial domain, let's say, and you can make some trials uh, by pushing content, seeing how it works. And uh, this, is, this is not a problem for us to open uh, trial domains. Um, just send an email and ask for a domain. We will we will give you a domain code and you can, you can start playing with it creating your content, linking your content to already existing content to IFC and see what happens with it. Until this, the, the end of this year, there is no problem for you to try it on both sides, let's say. Okay, great information. Thank you very much, Frederick. Uh, was very helpful for us to understand uh, where you stand and uh, how useful the, the uh, BSDD will be in the future for us. So uh, thank you very much from our side.